Death is inevitable. It is something that all beings who are alive must face, whether they be human, animal, plant, anything that is alive must face death, must meet that end of their time uh, on this planet in corporeality, and either go to another form within this this uh, material realm or go beyond it. And most of the time when something dies, it is fed back into the ecosystem in which some new life will be brought forth, uh, or at least will attribute to new life. Uh, so the first thing I have here is death is inevitable. We must accept it as a reality, as something that will happen. And we must try to understand it. As human beings, we have something that animals do not. And that is the ability to understand death, to understand what it is, uh, what it means to us as some as people who can understand it. And if there is something beyond death, if there is something that it feeds into, uh, when an animal thinks, uh, you know, what the extent that animals can have thought, um, there is no consideration for um, the meaning of death. Uh, they accept it as it is. There's an old saying among Hindus that uh, uh, only animals see the true nature of Shiva uh, or the true nature of uh, deconstruction or destruction, um, the true nature of uh, the end of life but also the nature of life in that end, uh, what it attributes to. Um, now, the second thing that I've put on here is life feeds on death. Um, everything that grows, uh, even, even the cells in our body, uh, the very cells in our body that uh, regenerate, uh, that produce new cells, um, the new cells feed off of uh, what the other cells have left behind. Uh, what other cells have uh, basically... Uh, formed in the pattern uh, that recreates in new cells within our body. Uh, and the, the the death of the plant material and the animal material in our stomachs uh, is what basically transforms into new cells within our body. This is obvious. I mean, this is, this is basic. But uh, our life is sustained by the death of other things. Now, it comes down to uh, the the understanding of harm, uh, when we think about should we harm things in order to sustain our life or should we not harm them, but that's a whole other topic. Um, when we look into the forest or, uh, or animals themselves, fungus grows out of animal flesh once they die. Uh, it fertilizes the trees and the plants when an animal dies. Uh, when the trees die, um, that, that sustenance creates more of the forest. When when certain plant materials die, that's when animals are fed. Uh, when certain animals die, that's when human beings are fed. And um, we can also choose to eat of vegetable matter and plant matter that is that is um, lacking in a nervous system that can feel pain. Uh, but once again, that's another discussion. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and move on to um, the third thing I put on here. Uh, it aids in the evolution of the spirit. Now, what do I mean by death aids in the evolution of the spirit. What I mean by that is that assuming that there is a life force within us uh, that can evolve based on its interaction with the ecosystem, with the earth, with other human beings, with um, its, its growing understanding of death, uh, the very life force in us can become more potent just by understanding its lack. Uh, understanding its lack of uh, a presence in things that are gone, and it, and how those things attribute to its its own force, uh, its own its own presence in our bodies, uh, and that's a, that's a learning that is passive. It's not something that we attribute uh, to the knowledge that we gain. We we attribute to it, but it is something that it, that is a passive learning for our very life force in our bodies. And our life force is different. The spirit is different than the soul. The soul is something that records and that exists from one reincarnation to the next, uh, again and again and again. And it doesn't necessarily have the same life force, but the life force is what evolves um, when it not only feeds on death, because everything must consume something that died, but also the spirit uh, has a very close relation to all other spirits around it, whether they be plant, animal, or human. And the exchange, the communication, the passive communication between our spirit and every other spirit around us uh, basically makes the spirit evolve by learning uh, once again passively, once again continuously, and once again um, always up if uh, it is allowed to 
be in harmony with other spirits around it based on the choice that our egos make uh, and that's the choice that our soul records when it observes it. Now, let's go to animals accept it because they can have no delusion as to what it is. Uh, and this is something that I mentioned just a couple minutes ago. Um, animals, if they are trapped and their leg is caught in something, they will chew it off without you know, thinking, should I do this? Oh my God, I'm not going to have a leg. They don't think about it. They chew it off. If they encounter a dead mate or if they encounter uh, one of their dead children, a lot of animals will eat the, jet, the dead child. But uh, whether it be a baby bird or baby mouse, what have you. Um, maybe not all birds, but um, other, other animals will eat their young if they die. Uh, they accept death when it comes. They don't, they don't contemplate about it, so there is no ego involved. There is no, there is no misconception involved because it's not conceptualized. Uh, that's why it is said, like I said earlier, that animals are the ones who can truly see Shiva or the, uh, uh, the aspect of God that is destroyed, but first and foremost, deconstructor, deconstructor of our illusions about what we think life and death is. And what we think as human beings that life and death is does not come into factor for animals. They, they accept it and they move forward. We have to learn to accept death and move forward uh, with, with its presence always there as human beings. Uh, but most people choose to instead uh, think about death as something that is as evil, that is terrible, that is uh, hard to digest, and it's hard to really think about for human beings since we conceptualize it in all the wrong ways. But if we accept it for what it is, like animals do, then we can move forward as both a spirit and a soul, and we can learn from uh, the lessons that death can teach. Uh, and we can truly understand and feel the life in our bodies and appreciate life once we understand the lessons death has to offer. But this is basically all I have to say about death for now. These have been a few thoughts about death, a uh, few that I've been thinking about tonight, and uh, I hope they were interesting to you. If they were, feel free to shoot down in the comment section, uh, you know, a comment about maybe this isn't true or maybe oh you know i love this Wh whatever you want to say you shoot it down in the comment section below if you like this video at all feel free to hit that thumbs up and uh, i hope to see every one of you in the future